Tonight it seems like the helicopters are nonstop. It's a good symbol for samsara. If you want to get out, you can't wait until everything is nice and neatly put to rest, put in its proper place, straightened out the way you'd like it. It's in the midst of this mess of samsara that we've got to practice, because samsara is always going to be this way. And unless we really want to get out, we're going to just follow along with the rest of samsara. Sometimes you hear that when you practice, you shouldn't exert your willpower because the will is a, an assertion of self. We're trying to get away from self. But it's interesting to note that when the Buddha talked about his own awakening, he never mentioned anything about discovering there was no self. And if you think of someone who had strong willpower, the Buddha is the number one example. It was because he wanted to find something that lay beyond birth, aging, illness, and death that he was able to find it. Without that desire, there would be no dharma, there would be no practice. It's simply a question of learning how to train your will. As John Fuhrer once said, if it was simply through brute force that we could get to nirvana, everybody would have gone there a long time ago. So our will has to be trained. It has to be turned into the will of right effort, the chanda of right effort, the chanda of the basis for success, focused on the causes. This is the causes for samsara inside, and the causes for getting out of samsara inside as well. So we have to look in here and straighten things out. It's not a matter of simply watching things arise and pass away and showing their true nature. You're not going to find out their true nature unless you want to, unless you probe, unless you ask questions. It's like scientists trying to find out about the behavior of an animal. Sometimes you simply watch the animal in its natural environment, but other times you have to change the environment to see how the animal's behavior changes, so you can get an idea of what's driving it, because that's what we're looking for. We're not simply watching the passing show. We're trying to see connections, simply seeing events without understanding the connections is not insight. And John Lee made this point, you can see causes, but if you don't see their effects, that's not insight. Or if you see the effects, but without the causes, that's not insight either. You've got to see the connection. And so in your own mind, you decide you're going to change things inside and see what happens. Make up your mind to stay here with the breath. Without having made up your mind, it's not going to happen. There may be some fluke times where the mind simply settles in, but you wouldn't understand anything. You wouldn't understand why causes and conditions came together at that point. But if you actively change the causes and change the conditions, with an eye to seeing, what is it in the mind that adds unnecessary stress and suffering, and what in the mind can take it away? That's when you know. So make up your mind you're going to stay right here. And as for the affairs of samsara, you just got to let them go. There are a lot of things out there that you look at the news, and it's very disheartening. But then you look back at the human race and its history, and it's been disheartening all along. Now there have been good examples, and this is why we have the Dharma. There are good examples of people who've found the Dharma, carried it on passed it on, put it into practice and made it something real. 
Those are the people we, we focus on, so that we can be one of them. I remember how they went about it. Read the story of the Ajans. And if they hadn't had a strong will, they probably would have just ended up tilling the fields, having families dying, and they would have disappeared. But it's because they had that will to figure out what is this that the Buddha has to offer. It seems like it has to offer. This teaching has to offer a lot, and it's open to anybody. Think of a John Munn statement. It's like being in battle. Your weapon is your discernment, concentration, mindfulness. These are your stores of food. The question is, who is the soldier? The soldier is the determination not to come back and be the laughing stock of the defilements ever again. That's a very strong statement of the will. But things don't stop simply with the will. It gives directions. But then we've got to learn how to train it, focus it on the causes. Why are we the laughing stock of the defilements? It's because we fall for their tricks again and again and again. They make promises and they renege. And then they come back and make promises again. It's like Lucy with the football. Charlie Brown is, knows that she's going to pull it away, and yet she talks him into thinking that he's, this time is going to be different, and it's the same. So no wonder they laugh at us. It's also why the Ajahn say that if you don't want them to laugh at you, you have to show that you're really determined. So you stick with it. Days when you're discouraged, you stick with it. Days when things are going well, you stick with it. You learn how to encourage yourself. Remember the Buddha's way of teaching. There was instructing, urging, rousing, and encouraging. And you have to learn how to speak to yourself in those ways. It's hard to remember the Dharma that you've read, but then go beyond that. Because the Dharma speaks in general principles, and we're not here to see general principles, we're here to see specifics. You might see that in a general way that, yes, craving does cause suffering. We're trying to look at particular cravings and particular sufferings to see how it happens and to see why did you fall for the craving, why you hold on to it, why you're passionate for your cravings, why you even crave craving. There's an interesting passage where the Buddha enumerates the various places where craving can be focused. And any of the factors of dependent core arising that come prior to craving. And then craving itself. We love our desires. We desire our desires. And then they turn on us. No wonder they laugh at us. So show them that you mean business. Get the mind to settle in. And the mind will come up with how about this? How about that? Why did you think about this? Now you've got some free time, and you have to show that you mean business. You stick with it. You hold on. The image the Johns give is of a red ant. In Thailand, they have these red ants that live in mango trees, and they're for some reason they're very defensive of the mango trees. Anyone who climbs up in a mango tree to get mangoes will get bitten. They bite hard, and it hurts. They're quite large. And if you try to pull them off, they hold on so tightly that the head will detach before they're willing to let go. And then John said, try to have that kind of tenacity. Show 
show yourself that you mean business. Because after all, it is your heart, and your heart is the one who's been having to suffer all along. And it doesn't suffer in general terms, it suffers from specifics. There are general patterns, and that's what the Dharma is for, to teach us the patterns, and to show us where to look and what questions to ask. And it's watching the mind in action. That's when you're going to get the answers to the questions. When greed, aversion, and delusion arise, how do they arise? How do they pass away? How do they come back again? When they come back, why do you go for them? What's the allure? Again, the text will answer in general terms, but you want to answer yourself in specific terms. What are the drawbacks of going with them? Then it's a kind of calculation. Compare the drawbacks with the allure. You see that the allure is not worth it. The drawbacks are so much greater. That's when you develop this passion, and that's when you can let go. And not the letting go. That's not something you can will. You set up the conditions. But when the mind lets go, it lets go from understanding, from seeing a connection that I didn't see before. So yes, the will does have its limitations in the practice. There are certain things you cannot will, but you can will the causes for them. Try to get the conditions right. That's the best use of your will.